All right, let's design a maker's coin. I'm in Autodesk Inventor. I clicked on a new part, and we're, I'll walk you through the process of how I would design one. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure I'm in millimeters. So let's go up here to Tools, Document Settings, and under Units, make sure you click on millimeters. Apply. If it is in inches, it will not scale properly for most slicers. Now that's what we're going to work with. So I'm going to be in 3D model here. Let's start with making a new sketch. Okay. Usually I start my sketches on the XY plane right here. So I start a new sketch. I'm going to go in the XY plane. We are going to make our maker's coin roughly a uh, 35 millimeter diameter and a five millimeter thickness. Now you can play with it a little bigger, a little smaller, but that's a good size that allows you to put some detail in, but uh, not so big it takes forever to print. So I'm gonna start with a circle. I'm gonna make the disc first. Now it helps out. I'm gonna start my circle right dead center there. I'm gonna go 35 millimeters. I'm sorry, it uh, disappeared on my cursor there, but I've got a 35 millimeter circle. I'm going to finish that sketch and I'm going to extrude that. Pick the profile I want to extrude. Let's make that five millimeters. And then I've got this, the place to start. Now, a lot of people are tempted to do all their drawing on the sketch right away before they extrude. Uh, Autodesk Inventor works a little better uh, if you do small edits on each sketch. Don't do too much because then if you've got an error in there that's causing a fault, you're not going to know which piece it is and sometimes it gets a little funky when it, how it extrudes. So, if, I, if you do things one piece at a time, it goes a lot better. So, I want to start off... Uh, I want to change the outside uh, pattern a little bit. I don't want it perfectly round. That's that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to go on the outside here. Now it is, I, I built my sketch right on the top of my coin. But I'm going to want to be able to reference this outside edge. And the easiest way to do that, this outside edge isn't really a part of the sketch. So if I project geometry, if I click on this, now that outside edge is a part of my sketch. That project, it projects it from previous areas right onto your sketch. Uh, now I'm gonna put a circle here. Now I wanna make sure the center of my circle is on this circle right here. There we go. Uh, I think eight millimeters would look pretty good. There's an eight millimeter circle. I like that. Yep. Perfect. I'm going to finish that sketch. Now what I'm going to use the circle to do is I'm going to cut a notch out. So I'm going to extrude that. Make sure you have just your circle picked, not the other one. You got to look at what is highlighted. Now I don't want it to stick out as a peg. I want it to cut. And now I've got that cut going. Uh, often I just go through all if I'm doing a cut. Check. Okay. Now I want to pattern it all the way around. I could have drawn them all in the sketch, but the easier way is to use a circular pattern right here. So circular pattern. I'm going to pick this feature right here. My rotation axis is going to be that edge. And you can change how many you want. I think six is going to look good, but I can go eight if I want, and that gives me more. No, six is about right. Bang. Now I've got that shape right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to create a lip around the outside, and I'm going to push this part in. So it's got that outside edge, kind of like how a real coin would. So I'm gonna start a new sketch. Remember, new sketch every time you've got a new feature. I wanna project that geometry. 
So now that outside circle is a part of my sketch. And I'm actually going to offset it. So I'm going to click the offset, this edge. Now you can eyeball it, but I like putting definite numbers in. So I'm going to offset it by two millimeters. You see a little two right there. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, time to extrude. I'm going to pick, you could pick the outside edge, but I'm going to pick the center and I'm going to push it in. Now, right now it's defaulting to popping it out. So instead I want to cut. Now it's also defaulting to five millimeters. So that's going to cut it all the way through. That's not, I don't think that's what I want to do. I'm going to cut it down two millimeters. Two millimeter thick edges will show up fairly nicely on a 3D printer. If you only cut it down a millimeter, it's not as pronounced. It doesn't look quite as good. And you start going less than that, it really may not show up very well at all. But there's my basic shape. Good. Uh, let's put a pattern there. All right. New feature, new sketch. I'm going to put a sketch. I clicked right on the inside face there. And I'm going to insert an image. So up here, I'm going to insert an image. All right, look, apply symbol. It's almost as if I planned this. I'm going to open that up. It's going to tell me where do I want to put it. I'm going to start right there. Hit escape so I'm no longer on the picture. Now I don't completely like where that is, so I'm going to move it around a bit. In fact, let's try to scale that a bit too. A little smaller. There we go. Perfect. I like where that is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm using this picture and I'm going to trace over it. Like if I print it, if I save the file like this right now, uh, that's like a sticker stuck on top. It is not going to print out. But I'm going to use that picture to follow these lines to draw some features. All right, so let's let's do that. Now I don't want straight lines. Straight lines. If you want, if you're doing straight lines, this is quite easy. But I am going to do some curves. I prefer the uh, uh, control vertex lines. All right. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to start on this corner. And I'm just going to keep clicking along the lines here and when I get to a sharp corner that's what I want. Now it didn't give me exactly what I wanted. That's okay because I can actually, I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to start clicking on these control vertices. I'm going to pull it out and keep playing with that until I get the shape that I want. There's another one down here. Oops. Undo. Be ready with that undo button, especially if you don't like what you see. No. Nope. I've got the resolution set fairly high on my laptop, so sometimes it can be a bit tricky to grab what I want. There we go. There's the control for Z. Pull that out. A little more. Grab this one right here. And let's pull that one in just a little bit. There. I like that. Okay, I'm going to go back. Keep grabbing control vertices splines. It's important that when you start a new line that it actually connects on. If you notice right there, it's got a coincident constraint popping up. If I were to start here, it's an open spot. If you don't actually have these lines touching each other, it's going to give you some weird errors when you go to try and extrude it. It needs a closed loop. Okay, so there's that. Let's pull this up a bit. Perfect. Okay, back to my spline. And be prepared to hit that scroll wheel lots. 
as I'm changing curves here, I'm going to put a lot more. No, oh, this isn't the way. Let's just grab that and move it away. A lot more dots. Uh, I don't think that curve at the bottom is going to play super nice. Let's hit enter. Actually, it's not bad. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. That's a straight line, so I only need to put one. Hit enter. Coincident constraint. Oh, that not where I wanted to start. I wanted to start right there. Perfect. The more you do this, the more you get a feel for how many points you're going to need to put. Obviously, more points is going to be more accurate. That isn't even close. So I'm going to take those control vertices. And I'm going to pull it right out. You can see that line. Perfect. Let's grab this one. Not bad. Actually, I'm good at that. Let's finish this off. I've got two more lines to go through. Let's make sure I've got that going. Coincident constraint. I'm just picking spots. All the way up to there. Hit enter. Monkey with this just a little bit. Grab these control vertices right here. There we go. When it's not doing a black line over a black picture, it's easier to see exactly what it's doing. I like that. It's not perfect to the picture, but that's what I'm looking for. So let's finish up here. And my line done. Uh, pull out this control vertice here. Just a little bit of escape. Good. I like that. Let's take a look at that sketch. Now, if you having trouble seeing your lines through there, I'm going to, I clicked on my sketch over here, right click on image. Let's turn the visibility off. Now I can see what it's going to look like. I like that. Let's finish the sketch. Now watch what happens. When I go to extrude it, I intentionally built in an error. Uh, one of my corners didn't quite play nice. So now when I go to extrude, it won't select this. I can select a face, I can select anything else, but it won't select my pie symbol. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to go, this is the most common error I have with people trying to extrude things, is they end up with an open loop. Have a look here. See how these two corners didn't quite connect? It will not extrude unless you've got a full closed loop. So I'm going to go click on that sketch. I'm going to go back in. And I'm going to fix that error. Uh, the easiest way to do that is I'm going to go up here. I've got a coincident constraint. So I'm going to grab that tip of that line. And I'm going to grab the tip of that line. Notice how it pops up a little symbol. When I go coincident, they automatically connect. I zoom out again on the front. I should now have a closed loop unless I made another mistake. And that mistake won't be on purpose. All right. Let's extrude. I have to find extrude works a little better if you look from a bit of an angle. There, that's perfect. That's my pie symbol. Now I can do a couple other things. I want to use this as a keychain. So let's put a loop on it. So I'm going to start another sketch. New feature, new sketch. Because I've got a lot going on in the front, it's a little easier to draw my sketch from the back. All right. 
So I want it right here. In fact, I'm going to use this little uh, hook right here we've already got. So I'm going to project geometry. I want to project this curve. I don't have to project the whole thing, but I want that curve because I want the center line right here. So for my loop, I want to make sure I'm right over that line. I'm going to draw a circle. I could type in, I know it's an eight millimeter diameter circle, or I can just click on this edge and you notice that symbol pops up, which is going to go straight to the line. Perfect. I'm going to offset that. Two millimeters is about the thinnest I would go on a keychain loop because even that isn't really going to be strong enough. I like three millimeters. All right. Finish that sketch. I'm going to extrude that. I don't want it to be tacked onto the back because it'll print poorly. I want it to go all the way through here. So I can put a distance in, I know it's five millimeters, or I can go to select the face. I click on that, it'll automatically go so it's flush to the top. Oh, and I accidentally cut. Now if that's not what I wanted to do, I can go back to that extrusion, double click on it, bring up the edit, and look at that. It's set on a cut. Let me go back to join instead. I want to join it in. Bang, I now have a keychain. Now one of the last things I'm going to do on this is I like putting my name on things, so I'm going to put it on the back. I'm going to put some text on there, so let's start a new sketch. Uh, all right, text. Click and drag the box about the size that you want your text to be. We can move it around later if it's not exactly where I want. Okay. Now, a three millimeter text is not going to show up on most 3D printers. You're gonna to wanna to do at least six millimeters. Anything finer isn't going to play very well. And even more so, I'm going to bold it. Now, you can change your, uh, your, your font right here. Or you can go with the default font. I'm going to put some initials in there. No, oh, this is supposed to be six millimeters. So let's highlight that. Go six millimeters. Hit OK. There we go. Now, anything too flow, uh, flowing, too fine, isn't going to print nicely. So now I've hit escape, so I'm no longer in the text option. And I don't like the way that's centered. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm gonna drag it right there so it's in the center. That looks good to me. Let's finish that sketch. And let's extrude that. I can click right on the text and extrude it. Even this might be a bit too fine. Now I don't want it to stick out the back because if it sticks out the back like that, it's going to print support on all these errors if areas if it prints at all. And that's going to be a mess and a pain to clean up. I want to cut that. Cut it in. Two millimeters is good. Bang. I have my initials on the back. Anything finer than that may not print well. And there, I have a maker's coin. There's lots of other tools you can play with. You can put chamfers, you can put fillets, all sign, sorts of things you can do to make it look cool. And you don't have to do it just like this, but this is just some ideas. Good luck.